like life and death, moon and sun, it's sure to each the piper comes. And while God and Goddess give for free, down below there will be fees. Despite perfect love and perfect trust, there's no way around it, cash is a must. We've sought within, but come up short, so we come to thee, your help to court. If you would aid this temple's life, a three dollar donation would be nice. Remember well that gifts when sent return threefold of what was spent. But if you can't, well blessed be. We shall survive, so mote it be. Merry meet and welcome to week 30 of Wicca, A Year and a Day in Magic. This is Lady Nefties, and this week we'll be covering love magic. Now, this video is meant to be a quick resource for you, so you can have all the necessary components for a love magic spell at your fingertips. So you can either put this video in your um, digital book of shadows, or you could put it, you can... Uh, write down and take notes and put it in your physical book of shadows. Now when should you perform any sort of love magic for attracting love? Well the best day would be Friday because this day is also sacred to the goddess of love, the Norse goddess of love, Freya. Also love's colors are pink and red. Now Pink is used for love, and then red is used for lust and passion, but also they can be interchanged. Red can be used for love, but if you feel like another color, say orange or purple or black, uh, appeals to you more as a color of love, then use that in your magic. Now herbs that can be used to attract love into your life. You may already be familiar with one of the most popular ones, which is the rose. Even today, even in the mundane world, they still use roses as a form of love magic, even though they, know, they don't know what they're doing. So, other than that, there's hibiscus, jasmine, lavender, lotus, peppermints, rosemary, violets, even catnip, it's not just for cats, cloves, and hyacinth. Now say if you want to put some lust or some uh, jazz in your love life, um, to create lust use vanilla, cinnamon, ginseng, strawberry, and lemongrass. Now these herbs you could either burn as an incense or put them in a satchel. Now crystals that you would use to attract love or promote love are jade, rose quartz being the most popular, amethyst, sapphire, and garnets. Now a word about ethics and love magic. Now you've probably heard it before, but do not affect the free will of another person when it comes to love magic and in any t sort of magic at all. Do not change somebody's free will with magic. It will turn out badly for you, it will backfire, it'll be bad karmically, and it goes against the Wiccan read. So, say if you have a crush on somebody and you want them to notice you, but this, you don't, you may not even know it, or you may not even be aware that they are in love, or hopefully that you're aware that they're actually in a relationship with somebody. And if you have a crush on somebody and they are in a relationship, and say they're married or dating, and you use magic to change that person's free will to get them to notice you and to love you, that will backfire on you. It'll be absolutely terrible and I implore you not to go down that road. So when you're casting love magic attraction, your love magic attraction spell may not bring the person that you intend it to. Even if that person is single and available, the love magic spell will bring the best possible person, the best match to you, and it will be better in the long run for you. Another word on love spell ethics is to not do love magic spells for another person that wants a spell put on another person. This won't turn out well for them because they don't let you know all the factors involved. 
when you're doing a spell for a second or third party, you don't know the person well enough and the spell will backfire on them. Unfortunately, even if you put your best effort into it, the person that wants the spell done, the party that wants the spell done, should really do it themselves and the effects will be better for them anyway. They'll, they know what's going on. But your task for this week is a simple one. I don't want you to go out and go cast a love spell when you don't need one, if you're already happy in a relationship, or if you don't want to be, you know, whatever, so on and so forth. But I do want you to focus and meditate more on loving not only your spouse or partner if you have one, but yourself, the earth, your life, and other people. You just focus on this loving energy and spread it around and it'll karmically, it'll be better in your life if you spread more loving energy towards your friends, families, co-workers, and that love will be returned to you. But until next time, blessed be.